Stayallday.com. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, today we're going to talk a, this is like a, a, a community, business, and social issue all combined together. Today is why I do not do in word business and y'all gonna understand exactly what i mean by that as i get through these points and if you are not black you should still listen because you want to you're going to understand some things that everybody needs to understand and what i'm going to explain here today now before i get into my points first of all let me tell you all i have a daily motivation text that i send out free of charge every single day to everyone who's in my text community if you want to be in my text community get that text every day for free Guaranteed to keep you focused, sharp, and on point. All you got to do is text me at my number, which is 305-384-6894. And every day when I send out, that, send out that text, since you're in my community, you'll be getting that message. So that number is down below in the description. Make sure you text me just to get it. So let's be clear off the top. Let's get a few things clear from the beginning of this episode here because I know some things I'm going to say here are going to cause some people who are more uh, emotional thinkers and not looking at things rationally, objectively, and logically, they're going to get upset just because of the fact of even the title of this episode. But as I get into explaining my point, you will understand exactly what I mean. And I bet you will probably agree with a lot of what I'm going to say. But maybe you won't. But let me get my disclaimers up front just so everybody understands. Dre Baldwin is not in the black or white business. I'm not in either business. I'm in the performance and results business, just so everybody understands. I talked about this in a prior episode of this show. Let me tell you what that was. That was episode number 2083. The only two colors that matter are green and gold. Green is what you get when you make money. Gold is what you get when you come in first. Those are the businesses that I'm in. Okay, so I don't care if it's a black person, white person, Asian, uh, if it's uh, where they're from, who they are, what their uh, religion, what your political affiliation, your nationality, your your culture, whatever other groups there are, if you can, if you're about performing and producing results, then we can work together. All right, those are the people that I do business with. I don't care what color or any other group that you want to consider yourself a part of. That's who I deal with. I deal with people who are about both and who are willing to devote resources to doing so. And I want you to understand, at the same time, there are many black people, including myself, who fit this description. However, and the reason for this episode, in my experience, there are also too many of them who do not. And being that I'm black, I come across a lot of these people, and that's why I'm talking about it here today. These are people who I could help if they had their shit together. So this episode is really about the people who don't have their shit together, yet they are trying to do business. And it slows progress for everybody, because I can't make progress through helping you because you ain't in position to be ready to be helped because you're doing inward business and we're going to talk about exactly what that means here today i'm going to articulate that and i'm going to articulate how it can be fixed so this can be looked at as a generalization of my own experiences because i've seen it enough but at the same time this can be a generalization of your experiences if you have seen it as much as i have but i will explain everything that i'm saying so you understand why i'm making such a generalization and again as I said, there are exceptions to this. I consider myself to be one, but those who have my business experience will know exactly what I'm talking about. What I'm going to share here today are those generalizations that I see far too often when I'm dealing with a certain percentage of black people in business. And one of the things that keeps these people who I'm describing from getting to where they want to be professionally. From, from getting, yeah, did I say that right? Yes, from getting to where they want to be, excuse me, professionally. If you are black and the things I share here today do not apply to you, if I say things that do not apply to you, then I'm not talking about you. But if you are black, then you may know exactly who I am talking about because you have seen it just as much as I have. So you can act dumb if you want, and that is your choice, but I'm not an actor. Those of you who are not black, listen to me right now. Still listen to what I'm going to say because I'm going to describe some things that may give you some insight into what people like myself see, hear, and experience when dealing with my own people 
that has absolutely nothing to do with the common topics you may hear spouted from the mouths of your favorite influencers, athletes, entertainers, and political figures when it comes to uh, black people in business, black people in advancement, black people in economic empowerment, black people in uh, social upward mobility, all the things that they say are the reasons why these things aren't happening faster or there aren't more people in certain positions has nothing to do with the color of anyone's skin or any type of uh, prejudices being used against us in any way. Not to say that those things don't exist. What I'm saying is the things I'm going to point out here today have nothing to do with that. The things I'm pointing out here today are all decision based, meaning people choose to do these things and they can choose to change if they wish. That's why I'm pointing them out. These are cultural things, things that are baked into the mindsets of certain groups of individuals. And hopefully me pointing it out can uh, I mean, people get giving themselves credit for starting conversations, right? Well, I'm not starting the conversation. I'm having the conversation right here today. Not only am I having a conversation, I'm actually going to point out how it can be fixed as well. So let's get to it. And I actually have pointed out how it can be fixed through uh, 2200 damn episodes of this show. So I'm not only starting the conversation, I'm ending it at the same time, but we can continue it if you wish. Point number one, today's topic once again is why I do not do in word business. Number one, punctuality and responsiveness. This is a very important thing to me. Punctuality and responsiveness. All of you who have followed my material know what I talked about in episode 1412. Early is on time, on time is late, and late is forgotten. This one's pretty simple. No matter what color you are, you understand what these words mean. Do you not? Everybody understands what it means, punctuality and responsiveness. Punctuality simply means being on time, showing up when and where you were supposed to show up, prepared and ready to do the thing that you have committed to or signed up for doing. That's what it means to be punctual. In the black community, we have many inside jokes and things that I sometimes use these jokes myself, one of them being what we call CP time. Any of you doesn't know what CP time means, it stands for colored people time. And again, if you are not black, don't go around using that joke. Nothing that I say here today, don't go around using these jokes if you're not black. This might, might punch you in your face, and I'm not joking. So colored people time is a thing that some black people use as a joke, like I'm late and I'm proud of being late. All right, yeah, we're all, we're all late. While it may make sense to show up late to like a, a movie premiere, some red carpet event, or to some party so you can look cool. All right, being late is not cool when you are doing business, when you are planning a meeting, or you're supposed to be executing on a project with another person. All right, those, those are not times when it's cool to be late. As I articulated in episode 1412, early is on time, when time is late, late is forgotten. I don't do colored people time. All right, Dre Baldwin does not do colored people time. And if you are on colored people time, we cannot do business. This applies not only to showing up in a certain location, but also applies to things like uh, simple responsiveness. If you and I meet and we decide we're gonna have a conversation, let's say two days from now, let's say that this is, is Monday, and we're gonna have a conversation on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, and I hit you up on Wednesday, and then you're not responding to me, and I don't hear from you again until Saturday, and you are hitting me up as if our meeting on Wednesday was never, that conversation never took place, I, we can't do, I can't do business with people like that. And this happens far too often when I'm dealing with or attempting to deal with black folks in doing business. And listen, are there people of other races who do the same thing? Yes, there are, but I'm not talking about them today. Today I'm talking about black people. So are there people in other spaces doing this? Yes, all right, everybody heard me? Yes, but we ain't talking about them. If I'm considering doing business with a person and they show me that they cannot be punctual or considerably responsive, we are not doing business. Okay, and this is one of the things, one of the points here. I'll talk about why I don't do inward business. This is one of the reasons. All right, point number two. Today's topic, once again, is why I do not do inward business. Number two, willingness to invest in yourself. This is a big one right here. This is a big one. I was talking to uh, somebody a, a week ago, and me and this individual, she was, uh, this is a, a female. I will say it was a female, and I will say she was black. And we were just talking about our businesses. She was telling me a little bit about what she was doing. I was talking about what I was doing. And she was talking about, well, you know, Dre, I'm you know, trying to put together these programs. I'm in this program where you know I'm trying to help. And she was talking about how she was trying to help uh, black people get ahead doing this and that. And I explained to her, I said to her through my experience in business, I'm a little bit older than her. I said to her, well, in my experience, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're trying to do. And I talk to a lot of black people every day. I get text messages from them. They watch my YouTube videos. I get DMs and emails from these folks. A lot of times they want the help 
and they want to get better because nobody comes into my world if you're not trying to get better because that's all I talk about. My whole thing is called work on your game. So you're not trying to work, you're not talking to me. But a lot of times they just don't want to invest in themselves. They don't want to put their money up. They don't want to put any money where their mouths are. They talk about wanting to get better, but they only want to get better as far as they can get it for free. And they don't want to invest in themselves. And that's fine if you don't want to invest in yourself. I don't hate you for it, but I'm in the business. I'm in business. Or what does business mean? Business means there's an exchange happening. And that exchange usually involves money flowing from one direction to the other. You're not willing to invest in yourself. How are we going to do business? Well, we can't. There's no business. There's no business if there's no exchange. This one is more on the consumer side here. I'm not necessarily talking about the entrepreneurs, but I, I am talking about them. This is really about the consumers because I'm a consumer as well. As a consumer, I invest. I pay for programs, I pay for books, I pay for courses, I pay to go to conferences, I pay for these things. If you're not willing to make these investments, how are you gonna call yourself a business person? But well, you're lying if you are, because you, no, you ain't doing no business. You're not making any exchanges. So this is more on the consumer side, but this can also apply to the entrepreneurial side, but it directly applies to many black people who say you wanna be an entrepreneur, and we're gonna talk about this on a, a soon to come episode of this show, but I've talked about it many times in the past. All right. Being an entrepreneur means you are incurring a financial risk. All right, that's the definition of entrepreneurship is that you are incurring a financial risk. You are putting money up with the idea, the goal of making more money on the back end than what you put in on the front end. This is what investment is. All right, you put something in up front and you get more back on the back. Hopefully you get more back on the back. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. That's the game that you're stepping into. That is how business works. And this is also why Many people should not become entrepreneurs. Many people want to be entrepreneurs, but they shouldn't be entrepreneurs because you don't have the mindset to, first of all, understand this. Second of all, apply it. Third, to accept it. Understand, apply, accept. If you can't do all three, you shouldn't be in entrepreneurship. This game is not for you. I run into too many black people who want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't want to invest in themselves. They don't want to pay for a course. They don't want to hire a coach. You don't attend any events. You don't want to do it. You want to do everything that you can get up through and including watching YouTube and listening to a podcast. All right, you're good up to that level, but as soon as it requires you going in your pocket for something, then you got an issue. All right, but you you ain't got no problem going to the the designer fashion store and getting yourself some Gucci or Louis Vuitton or having some Jordans or going to the the bar or going to the mall or taking some girl out to dinner. You don't have, so you don't have a problem putting money up. It's just a matter of what you're putting the money up for. That's the challenge. It's not the, the actual act of putting up money. It's just where's the money going to is the challenge for most people. I have more content. And let me tell you why I'm qualified to say what I just said. I got more content on YouTube and more episodes on the podcast platforms than damn near anybody out there. All right, it's probably not a single person listening to this show right now. This show does one to 200,000 downloads a month. This show right here, Work On Your Game. There's not a person listening to this probably who has more videos on YouTube and more episodes on podcast platform than me. And even I am telling you, you need to invest in things that cost money in order to reach your potential in the business world. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I watch YouTube videos, not that many, but I watch some. But guess what? I still put my money up when it's time to go to a conference, when it's time to get into a program, when it's time to sign up for a course, when it's time to buy a book, when it's time to, like, you see these books behind me on the shelves? A lot of them are my books, but I got a shelf down here. You can't really see it. It's not really up for display, but there's a bunch of books on these lower shelves that are not my books. They're other people's books, stuff that I need to read, stuff that I signed up for, newsletters that I'm subscribed to. Why? Because those are the things that help me take my game to the next level. You got to be willing to invest if you want to play the game. If you're not willing to buy in, you can't play. All right, any of you ever played poker? Any of you ever got into, any of you play any kind of card game? You got to put some money up. You can't show up with no money. All right, you got to bring something to the table. You're not willing to bring anything to the table. You can't play. All right, this is how people, and people are looking at you like, all right, is this guy putting any money up or not? Now, if you ain't putting no money up, you can't sit down. You can't grab a seat at the table. All right, this is the game. And it's not like you ain't got it. It's just a matter of what you're doing with it. Again, I'm not talking about the people who don't have it. If you don't have it, then hit me up. I'll tell you some ways you can go get some so you can make some investments in yourself. And again, I'm telling you that not I don't do these things and invest in myself to prove that I can, but because there's information, insight and access in these places that I pay for access to that I otherwise would not get just through consuming free material. If all you needed to reach the heights of your success was consuming free material, then, well, everybody should be as everybody should be as successful as you possibly could be by now, right now, because how much free material is there out there? 
a whole lot of free material. There's more free stuff out there than paid stuff. So what's your excuse at this point? Everybody in the world has a podcast or a YouTube channel, damn near everybody. So if that's all you needed to reach the heights of your potential, why aren't you there already? If you're not, that should be telling you something. And everybody who's listened to a show called Work On Your Game, there's something that you're trying to get to. I don't care how successful you are. There's something that you're still trying to get to in your life. That's why you listen to a show called Work On Your Game, which means there may be some professional help that you need to get, which is why you invest in yourself. This is the game, folks. One reason that uh, black people have not ascended to a certain level as a whole in business, and a lot of people talk about this, a lot of people who you know they talk about uh, why uh, black people don't have this kind of economic empowerment or they don't have this kind of financial, um, uh, the dollar doesn't stay in the black community. People talk about that a lot. Dollar stays in the black community for, I believe it was six hours, where it stays in other communities, like an Asian community for, I believe it was, I can't remember, it was a matter, it was several days. It was like 30 days or something like that as compared to the black community. But one reason why uh, this challenge exists and we haven't ascended to a certain level is because we don't have, and it's not about individual people, it's about the cultural expectation of investing in ourselves and investing in our business. The cultural expectation, be clear. Are there business people out there who invest in themselves and invest in their business? Of course there are, otherwise these businesses wouldn't be successful. They wouldn't be successful people out there, period, that look like me. Then I include myself in that group. But at the same time, culturally, we don't have the overall expectation of doing this. There are plenty of individuals who do it. I'm talking about us as a group, and there's far too much expectation of freeloading, especially when we're dealing with each other, and not enough expectations of investing. I remember I exchanged text messages, and well, I know that I exchange text messages and direct messages with people every single day, and I tell them directly. I tell people directly, you need to hire a coach. Based on your challenges, and based on what you've been doing up to this point, and based on how long you've had the challenge, you need to get yourself a coach, you need to get yourself some professional help to help you solve the problem that you've been dealing with. I tell people this damn near every day I say that to somebody. I tell people, you need to invest in going to an event because they're telling me about challenges that I know can be solved that they just be, simply would be willing to invest in themselves, yet they still don't do it. And again, I keep throwing up the disclaimer that because people like to take things out of context and no, label themselves as victims or try to make me look bad in some way. Are there Asian people and Latin people and white people who also don't invest in themselves? Hell yeah. But again, we ain't talking about them today. Today, we're talking to you. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why I do not do N-word business. Standards and professionalism. Standards and professionalism. I told you in episode 2097 that standards still matter. What does that mean? It means that there are certain expectations that are put in place for a group or anyone who comes to a certain community and everybody needs to live up to that standard. That's what it means when I say standards matter. Listen to episode 2097 for the full context. However, when we remove standards or there are no standards in the first place, what we get as a result is chaos and a lack of results. When there are no standards, you get chaos and when you have chaos, you don't get results, at least not consistently. So why do, let's give an example. As a generalization, why do Asians perform so well academically? Again, I'm not saying every Asian is a, a genius. Why do Asians so perform so well academically? The reason why they do as a group is because they have a standard in their community of performing really well in school. It is an expectation that is placed on them at home all the way up through their, their, um, their rearing years. And you could almost call it a demand that is placed on them, that you will perform and excel in school. In the black community, when it comes to business, we, as a general rule, generally speaking, we have very low standards for ourselves. And as a matter of fact, there's some black people hear what I'm saying today and find a way to get mad at me simply because I said some things that they don't want to hear. Not because I'm wrong, because I said some things they don't want to hear. One of the best ways to lower the performance of a group, you know what it is, is to eliminate standards. If you want a group to not perform, all you had to do is remove the floor. In other words, the, the floor is the, the low level, the lowest level that will be accepted. Just lower the floor or completely remove the floor and that group's performance will drop immediately. Why? Because there are no standards. See, the standard is the floor. The ceiling is the goal. So remember when Michael Jordan said the ceiling is the roof? The ceiling is the goal. 
All right, the ceiling is the, the high level that you want everybody to get to. The floor is the standard that says, okay, any, no one is allowed to be below this level right here. In the Asian community, students perform really well because from the time that they are, from the time that they're old enough to understand language, they are told that here's the floor of what you're going to do academically and you will perform at this level or higher. And there are no exceptions. In our community, we are doing our best. And this is not just in business. And I'll talk about this. I've talked about this in other episodes and then maybe I will again in, other, in future episodes. We're doing our best to eliminate the standards. So where there are no standards whatsoever, nobody's held to any kind of, nobody's held to any kind of standard and there's just no floor at all. And if anybody tries to install a floor, they get attacked for trying to install a standard. And people come up with these great excuses for why we don't have a floor, why we don't have standards. That's why I made episode 2097. Professionalism is defined as, here's the definition of professionalism, the competence or skill expected of a professional. The work on your game definition of a professional is a person who shows up every single day and performs regardless of how they're feeling. The dictionary definition of a professional is a person who shows up and does something as your main paid occupation. If you want to be in business, there's a certain level of competence that is expected of you, a standard that you must live up to. Everybody here who has a job, is there a standard at your job? Is there a standard in your industry? Whether if you run a business, is there a standard to what you are, what you need to deliver in order to be in that game? When I played professional basketball, there was a standard of performance that I had to live up to. If I didn't live up to, I wouldn't have a job. If you're a teacher, if you're a doctor, if you're a banker, if you're a lawyer, if you're a fill in the blank with what you do, you pick up the trash for a living, there is a standard of what needs to get done. If you're not hitting that standard, there's gonna be a problem between you and the person who signs your checks. Does everybody agree? A challenge that I notice with black people in business is that we just don't like having standards. The new way to combat standards, you know what black people do these days to combat standards? Is anytime somebody tries to talk about standards, they say, oh, well, you're, you're trying to use some Eurocentric idea or that's some form of white supremacy or you're a white, you're a, the black mouthpiece of white supremacy. This is something that people actually say. Those of you who are not black, listen to this. If you haven't heard these things, these are things that people actually say. This is something that somebody might say to me because of what I'm saying here in today's episode. Or you're just a, you're just a black mouthpiece for white supremacy because you're talking about standards. Can you believe that? That me talking about standards is somehow I'm taking something that a racist white person would say and they're using me to say it to be racist against my own people. This is what people are saying. That they're somehow relating setting standards to it being racist or Eurocentric or I'm following what the, the white people say as if that's some kind of negative thing. Bullshit. This is, the reason, this is one of the main reasons why we aren't performing at the level that other groups are performing at simply because we don't have standards and if somebody starts talking about standards, they get attacked for talking about having a standard. This is a cultural thing. And again, are there individuals out there who have very high standards and are performing at a high level? Absolutely there are. When I say cultural, I mean it needs to be widely adopted, widely accepted and enforced by everybody from the inside. Standards are how groups and entire communities elevate themselves and perform at a high level as a whole. So yes, individuals can have standards, but it's when an entire group has a standard that everybody respects and lives up to that the group elevates itself. We got a lot of solo performers in our community. What we need is the entire community to accept and live up to a certain standard. So I've been in the professional speaking world for eight years, you know, he's eligible for eight years. And I speak at events, I attend events, and I'll tell you something, whenever I'm thinking of attending an event, an event where I'm gonna buy a ticket to sit in the audience, not as a speaker, but I'm a uh, attendee, I'll take a look at the previous events and how they've been put on. And when I look at previous events and I see a bunch of people in the audience wearing Jordans, jeans, fitted hats, regular casual streetwear, I usually don't buy tickets to those events. Actually, I never buy tickets to those kind of events. I like going to events where there are some standards being enforced even with how we dress why and what is that why does that matter to me a guy who you see me you watching this video right now sometimes i got a business clothes on sometimes i got a suit on sometimes i got on a t-shirt and snapback hat myself why does that matter to me because i know through life experience that when those kind of standards are in place with the way that people dress and they show up to an event you attract a certain type of audience. You attract certain types of people and there's going to be a certain level of information being shared there and there's a certain type of people that I'm going to meet in the audience as opposed to when there aren't any standards. I know this to be true. I've seen it enough to be able to make that generalized statement. If somebody wants to challenge me on it, let me hear it. 
And I'm a guy who lives in Miami. It's hot and humid here. I got Jordans. I got basketball shorts. I got t-shirts and snapback hats. When I go to an when I go to a, a business event, any of you follow my social media, when you see me on a stage at a business event, or you see me at a business event, period, you see what I'm wearing. You see me in suits. All right, why? Because I want to represent a certain standard when I walk into a room and I want to be around other people who also have that same standard. Other cultures have these in place. We need it too. And there's a conference that I went to that I'll be going to this year. And I remember I, I went to this conference and last year there was there was a mix of some people who were dressed a certain way and some people who were dressed another way. And I said, these guys are getting kind of loose with the way that they're letting people show up here. And maybe they didn't care. I don't I don't know. Maybe it was because it was right after the all the shutdowns and all that. And they were being a little bit loose with it. But I'm like, yeah, these guys need to tighten up with the way that they're doing this. And maybe they don't care. And in the big picture, maybe it doesn't matter to some of those folks but when i look at the people sitting at the front when i look at the people who are doing the most the people who are you know getting the most recognition and achieving the most they're showing up with a certain standard as compared to all the people all the other people all the people sitting in the back and again i see this i've seen it often enough to make this generalized statement so if anybody wants to challenge me anything that i said here today Hit me up and don't paraphrase anything that I said. Make sure you quote me directly. With all that said, let's recap today's class, which is why I don't do N-word business. I am, as I told you, I'm not in the black and white business. I'm in the performance and results business. And too often today, we are just not holding ourselves to certain standards as black folks. And I, that's one of the main things that's slowing us down as a whole when it comes to business. There are plenty of individuals doing their thing. But I want to talk about what we're doing as a whole, as consumers and as uh, practitioners and some things that we need to do that will help step our games up. Number one, punctuality and responsiveness. In other words, be on time. Respond when you say you're going to respond. No follow up when you're supposed to follow up. I don't do colored people time. On time. Early is on time. On time is late. Late is forgotten. If you make plans to respond to somebody or have a conversation with somebody and actually do it, don't wait a week to respond and follow up with that person. I don't do business that way. And again, other cultures, they don't do business this way. And if I come and in, run into a person who does business like this, I'm not dealing with them. I don't care what color they are. Point number two, willingness to invest in yourself. This one is more on the consumer side rather than entrepreneurial side, but it directly applies to many black folks you want to be an entrepreneur you want to be a professional you want to go to a higher level but you are not willing to invest all right entrepreneur entrepreneurship the definition is you are conducting business while incurring a financial risk that is the definition of the term if you want to be an entrepreneur you got to get in the game all right this is the investment that you make up front a lot of people just want it they want to get in the business but they don't want to play the game you don't want to do the hard part you want to do the easy part which is you know watching youtube listening to podcasts calling yourself an entrepreneur but you're not doing any of the thing that you need to actually be in the game. And anyone who's really in the game, they are investing in themselves. I don't care, again, what color, what age, what uh, gender, identity, they are always investing in themselves. Go look around and you see it. I tell people all the time, you need to hire a coach. You need to invest in going into an event because I know that it'll take people to the next level. And you gotta be willing to do that if you wanna play the game the way you say you wanna play the game. Number three, standards and professionalism. I told you in episode 2097, standards still matter. Standards mean there is a floor to what is acceptable when it comes to performance and anybody who is under that floor gets kicked out of the room they're not allowed in the room or they are relegated out of the room all right that's the way it worked in overseas sports the worst teams in every league get relegated down to the next lower league we need to have that same kind of standard in our communities when it comes to business other communities do the exact same thing they have standards in place not only ceilings of the goals to be hit but the floor of what is the lowest possible common denominator of what is acceptable we don't have that in place in what we're doing reason Asian perform so well academically, Asians perform so well academically because they have a floor. Right, they're taught from a young age, this is the floor of what you're going to do academically and that's why they perform because it's a demand that is set on them. We need to have these standards in place for ourselves. The problem for a lot of black folks is that with so many people throwing around anything about social justice, anything about racism, anything when it comes to standards, people are trying to, well, people will label it as racist or Eurocentric or white supremacist. Somehow, some way, they find a way to label it that just so the standards don't get set. Anytime you want to completely eliminate results for a group, all you have to do is eliminate the standards, eliminate the guardrails, and what you get chaos and you will not get consistent results. If we want to perform at a high level consistently as a group, 
Not just individuals doing it. We got a lot of individual players, but if we're going to perform well as a group, then everybody has to step their standards up and perform at a high level as a whole. And the people who are not performing must be held accountable for not doing so. That's why I'm doing this episode right here. So even when I go to events, I want to see that there's a standard. I want to see that there's a people got to dress up a certain way. If you're wearing certain clothes, you can't come in the room. I like there being standards like that in the event that I'm paying for. Now, if I'm just going somewhere for free, cool, wear whatever you want, just like me. But if I'm going to go to an event and pay for it, even if I'm going to an event and speaking at it, I want to be in an event where there are standards in place because I know the people who have those kind of standards, they're going to show up a certain way. These are the type of people who are willing to invest in themselves, which means there's more opportunity for me. All right. All of those things matter. And this is why. All that said, text me to get my daily motivation free of charge straight to your phone. My number 305-384-6894. And go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. See all the ways you can work with me directly. That's the only place to get that information. Workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre all 